Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the big rig, some Polaris bags that I recently made, feed sack fabric panels, the book review will be for stitch and sew, I'll be demonstrating how to add a clear vinyl ID sleeve to any bag, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Social Sunday. I saw so many of you before the show chatting, which I always love to see. Um, thank you everyone so much again for sending well wishes. I saw lots of well wishes in the comments. Um, uh, very supportive emails or comments in the Facebook group. Um, I got some cards and packages in the mail, so thank you so much for your understanding and your support. Um, while we had our little break from the live shows, um, if you're not already aware, we have a new schedule for Social Sunday. So the new schedule is the first and the third Sunday of every month. Um, we're just trying to um, keep with a regular schedule, but allow some time for uh, working on new patterns and new tutorials. So I think the new schedule will be good. I did a little bit of experimenting earlier today with, uh, normally I don't send out a newsletter announcing when we'll be going live. Um, but just because uh, this is a new schedule and um, it's not every single week like it used to be, I was hoping that um, the newsletter would keep everyone notified, at least the people that wanted to watch live, because of course you can watch the live show, um, at least the recording of the live show anytime throughout your week. Um, uh, but let me know if that <laughs> newsletter send that I sent out a few hours ago was helpful in reminding you about the show or maybe you already get your reminders on YouTube or Facebook uh, for when we go live. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, just trying to experiment and um, make sure everyone's aware about the show because I, I love doing Social Sunday. It's a lot of fun. And I think it's even more fun uh, the more uh, So Sweetness fans that we have joining us because um, it's especially fun if you come early and get to chat with everyone in the comments before the show. So. Just a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So as always, my favorite portion of the show is the notion of the week and I've collected quite a backlog of notions in the last couple months, um, things that I wanted to share with you. And so this notion for today is sort of available in several different iterations or known by uh, different names. You might be familiar with the Gina Majig. The product that I'm sharing with you today is called the Big Jig. It, it's very similar. It serves the same purpose. Uh, it just looks a little bit different and it's a different color. Um, but either the Gina Majig or the Big Jig is really helpful, especially when you're finishing up your bag and you're top stitching that top area um, where your seams intersect. Uh, sometimes it can get a little bit thick. And so um, the Gina Majig, it's known by that name because um, people often use it for hemming jeans or top stitching um, that lower area of the jeans where the seams get really thick, um, but it's also helpful for bag making. So while I can't actually demonstrate sewing with the Gina Majig live just because the white sewing machine really messes with our live, um, excuse me, live cameras, I've got my presser foot out so I can simulate sewing so that I can demonstrate, uh, hopefully demonstrate as well as possible how either the Gina Majig or the Big Jig works. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and share with you. I've got um, a little finished desktop cube and as I know you're all bag makers, you're familiar with um, seams like this and top stitching where the fabrics intersect at the seam, it gets a little bit thicker just because there's extra fabric and interfacing here. And so while I've already top stitched this because this is a past project, I pulled it out just so I could demonstrate top stitching with the, either the Gina Majig or the Big Jig. So this is what the Big Jig actually looks like. The Gina Majig is pretty similar. Um, the Big Jig comes with two different thicknesses of acrylic. Um, the thinner one should be fine for the demonstration. 
Um, but it both of them have a cutout for the needle, which is the center portion right here. So I'm just going to simulate with my presser foot. Um, you want to, um, as you're approaching the seam, as you get close, um, that's when the big jig or the genoma jig is going to be pulled out. And so as you're familiar with sewing, your presser foot goes up and down as you're stitching. As you approach the seam, um, maybe about a half inch away from the seam, you want to lift, put your needle down, lift the presser foot up, and we're going to stick that acrylic behind the presser foot and then go ahead and set that presser foot down. Because the acrylic elevates um, the presser foot, it kind of makes it a level playing field for when you reach the seam. So you're going to stitch a few stitches with the acrylic underneath it. Once you get to the very end of the seam, you're going to stop with the needle down, lift the presser foot up, and then this slides actually in the front so that you can continue sewing and have sort of a level playing field. So again, it starts off by going underneath. You're going to sew the seam, place it in front, and then you're going to continue sewing. So it just makes everything nice and straight so that you can get um, evenly spaced space stitches so that you don't have um, spread out stitches and then as you reach the seam everything gets jammed together. So again the, the particular one that I have is called the Big Jig. Um, the Gina Majig is also um, a cheaper option. The Gina Majig just comes with one small piece. It's like a reddish color but they serve the same purpose. So again um, sewing those thick seams with either the Gina Majig or the Big Jig. So um, I'm wondering how you normally navigate your thick seams. So I admit even though I have these tools, sometimes I'm in a little bit of a hurry um, and I just go over the seams. I admit my Juki is a real workhorse and I normally don't have trouble with the thick seams, but um, let me know if you do something special. Um, first off, I normally start off with a longer stitch length to begin with. So my normal stitch length is two and a half millimeters. When I'm doing any top stitching, I lengthen to at least three millimeters just to get nice long stitches um, so you can see every stitch, um, even through the thick fabrics. Um, so I'm gonna be checking in the comments later to see how everyone is uh, navigating those thick seams. So um, a few projects that I've been working on lately is um, I we filmed a video for the Polaris bag, which uh, we're hoping to get together to release with some other videos soon. So I wanted to show you, I was really happy, especially with um, this particular Polaris bag that I made out of um, some great wool fabric and I put a metal label on the front of it. So this is the square version of the Polaris bag and there's also another rounded version that I made um, with this great big print. This is from Art Gallery Fabrics and I thought it was just the perfect size, this print to go on the front of the bag. And this particular one has piping on it. So there's instructions in the pattern for piping. And obviously I left the piping off of the, the square version, but um, yeah, I'm especially loving um, this pink wool, how that one came out. And I have a new pattern that I'm working on. Uh, we're gonna be filming the video, hopefully next week for this pattern. Um, it's a really, a pouch that comes together rather quickly. As you can see, it's the three different, it comes in the three different sizes. Uh, I'm going to slide the two smaller sizes out of the way just so I can show you with the bigger the bigger version the details of the pouch because it's uh, kind of cool and it has different uh, sections to it. So let me show you the outside really quick. So as you can see, it kind of looks like there's two pouches joined at the bottom and the sides. There's one single zipper at the top. So this is a handbag zipper. Let me unzip this and show you the inside the best that I can. Um, so there's a zipper pocket on the inside. And I'm gonna try to hold this up so that you can see the inside really well. So there's a center section where the two pouches kind of meet. And there's also uh, two additional separate pouches over here. Let me try to hold this up a little better so that you can see. So the pouches are actually joined and where they're joined, it makes uh, sort of a, a center section in the middle. And even though it, it's a slim looking pouch and it only has the, the single top zipper, there's tons of storage space. And I know, especially with my pouches when, I, when I'm storing sewing supplies or cosmetics, I like to sort of have things organized, like not everything in the same compartment. And having the three separate compartments in this pouch um, makes it really cool um, to separate whatever items that you're putting inside. So. Um, this pouch actually came together really quickly. I've made a whole bunch already just because I was trying to get 
the instructions down and uh, by probably the fifth or sixth pouch, they're just going like that. They're really fast to put together and these fabrics are designed by Barry J for Art Gallery Fabrics, just in case you were wondering. She always has some really great painterly florals and I just thought the fabrics looked really great together. So um, besides these two projects, we're also working on SVG files. If you're not familiar with what an SVG file is, um, those with electric cutters, such as the Cricut Maker, the Silhouette, Brother also makes an electric cutter as well as Sizzix. Um, electric cutters work with SVG files in order to cut out um, fabric interfacing. Um, the cutters can cut out all sorts of different things. Um, but the SVG files uh, that we're working on for some of my smaller projects um, will enable you to use uh, the pattern, some of the patterns that I have uh, with your electric cutter. So we got started with some of the free um, cork projects, which I've linked to those in the description, but uh, we'll be um, slowly adding more and more SVG files. Again, um, the SVG files generally only work with smaller projects like pouches or other smaller accessories, but um, I do have a lot of small accessories in the pattern arsenal, so um, especially the minikins. So the SVG files, I feel, will come in handy for quickly cutting things out, especially if you're making a lot of things for gifts or um, for craft fairs. So look for those, um, more of those soon. And we did add an SVG file um, subheading to the shop. So as we add more and more files, you'll be able to find them. And by the way, those cork projects, um, while we do have the, have the SVG files available, if you don't have an electric cutter, um, the PDFs and the videos are available for those projects as well. So no electric cutters or special supplies needed to make the projects. We just wanted to add the SVG files um, to make them a little bit more handy for those of you that have the cutters. And another thing that I wanted to let you know about is we have a shipping break coming up at uh, the very end of July and into August. And so what that means is um, while the shipping break is in effect, we won't be shipping out any physical orders like uh, fabric or mesh. Um, so if there's something that you need from the shop, um, please do order it this month before we go on the shipping break. And as always, the PDFs or the videos, you'll still be able to order those and receive those instantly as always. So um, I, have, I have some fun fabric, um, I guess sort of fabrics that I got recently that I wanted to use for pouches. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you these really cool fabric panels that I got. All right, so uh, you know I love horses, so my the panels that I bought, I'll have horses on them. Although this particular shop, it's a shop on Etsy, I linked to it in the description. They had fabric panels in all different sizes. Um, these are kind of like vintage feed sack um, designs. And there's all sorts of fun things. There were some for, um, kitchen related things like flower sacks and apples and honey and um, holiday related fabric feed sack panels too. And I just thought these were really cool. Uh, they're printed on sort of a canvas like fabric and I thought I'd use these for the center of some pouches. So I got multiples of the same design. I thought they'd look really cool, especially on the front of the candy uh, cotton candy pouch, which is, let me pull my cotton candy pouch. So. I thought it would be really cool in the center panel right here and then just use maybe cork for the sides. Um, but again, there's tons of different designs available. These are just the ones that I chose. And especially if you're into vintage looking designs or um, use that kind of decor in your home, you might be interested in checking out some of the feed sack panels available. So again, I've linked to that Etsy shop and there's tons of designs. I don't know if there was, there's gotta be at least 100 different designs in the shop. It was really cool and I really enjoyed browsing and looking through all of the selection that was available as far as the feed sack panel. So uh, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, um, I saw tons of bag ladies and bag dudes watching. So uh, let me know, I really enjoy seeing uh, the feed be filled with uh, bag lady and bag dude um, comments and uh, we really appreciate your support um, not only during the shows but um, on Facebook in the Facebook group um, and just um, overall thank you so much for being part of the community we really really appreciate it so uh, just some things that the family's been up to lately uh, we went out for the 4th of July um, if you're in the United States I hope you had a lovely 4th of July we went to a block party yesterday 
I'm not sure if all parts of the country have block parties, but um, basically um, our street block, uh, we shut it down so we block it off uh, using cars. Everyone moves their car away from the street. Um, here in Chicago, a lot of people, while we do have garages, uh, a lot of people do park their cars on the street. So we clear the whole street off. Um, a lot of communities rent uh, bounce houses. They have um, clowns, face painting, um, all sorts of activities. And basically people set up tables, chairs, and tents um, in front of their house, but um, either in the front of their yard or in the street. And then there's DJ with music and it goes on for hours. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we went to our neighbor's block party uh, yesterday and we have our own block party next Saturday. So um, just lots of fun things for the summer. Um, um, I've been riding a lot lately, going to the stable, and um, really fun this past week. I'm not sure if they have Budweiser beer in all parts of the world, but um, anyway, Budweiser, if you're not familiar, is a brand of beer, and they do, for years now, they've done a lot of commercials featuring Clydesdale horses, which are big draft horses. They're huge. And anyway, um, the Budweiser Clydesdales tour the country, and um, can be seen at different events. And so the Budweiser Clydesdales were actually at my stable um, this past week. They arrived in three huge big semi trucks. I'm not sure how many horses fit on each semi, but uh, they're painted red and they say Budweiser Clydesdales. And so the horses were taking a pit stop at my stable and it was really fun to see them. Um, again, they're gigantic and it was fun seeing them have a bath. So we have uh, at my stable, it's called a, a, a bathing stall. So it's basically a, a cement area with a hose and we take the horses in there one by one and um, give them a bath, you know, wash, hose them down, uh, wash them with shampoo. And I saw a few of the Clydesdales getting a bath. Uh, two, two men were washing each horse and they actually had a stool because the horses are so tall, they were using the stool to um, hose off the horse's back. Jennifer says they actually have six teams of the Clydesdales that travel. Oh, I didn't even know that. Um, thanks for commenting with that, Jennifer. Um, but it was really fun. They're so good. They just stand there while they're getting hosed down and um, they're beautiful and they're clearly very well taken care of. So it was fun seeing those Clydesdales come through the stable. And um, another fun thing that I wanted to tell you about that I was doing with the kids, I signed them up for, um, uh, it's sort of like, uh, mystery letters and packages that come in the mail and they're available for all age groups. I chose one that was uh, suitable for the age of my kids which is 10 and 12 and so every few weeks they get letters in the mail. Um, it's I call it the spy club so they get letters in the mail from a fictitious spy organization. Um, in the letters the kids are told that they need to help solve um, uh, some ciphers, uh, spot clues, and so we get these letters and different documents in the mail. We've had two of them already so far and it was really exciting because it's a combination of all sorts of different things. In every letter we have to find um, a hidden numeric clue and go online or call on the phone, enter the clue in, and we get a secret message. Um, another part of the um, letters that come in the mail is uh, this time we had to solve a cipher. It was actually really hard. I was helping the kids with it, um, but we had to decipher um, like a short paragraph um, using different uh, clues. They got their own spy book, reading about um, how to become a spy and what was necessary and what spies did. So it's just been really fun. They've been looking forward to getting the letters in the mail and um, they each have their own official spy name. So uh, just a, a fun activity that I found online for us to do together over the summer. Of course, we like doing a lot of things outdoors, but um, having this uh, tricky thing with different riddles is just something fun that be we've been working on when it's really hot outside. So um, that being said, let me jump over to the book review for this week. It's a book called Stitch and Sew, and I think you're gonna like it. It combines embroidery with um, pouches and different accessories. Okay, so here's the book. It's called Stitch and Sew. It's written by Anila Hui and it combines different embroidery designs with small accessory pouches. So um, kind of right up my alley. I like seeing all the different designs and the embroidery, as you can see, turns 
a simple pouch into something um, almost gift worthy. So the first half of the book is talking about the different embroidery stitches. So as you can see here, the fern stitch, they sh you're shown how to make this stitch and there's an actual example shown in the book, a satin stitch and a whole bunch of other stitches. So if you're not familiar with embroidery, this will help you get your feet wet. Um, and I really enjoyed this portion of the book. Um, this chapter is called Embroidery Beyond the Basics. So it's using the different stitches in the different design layouts. And so as you can see, it, it kind of punches everything up from just a simple lined design with the thread to something a lot more. So I thought it was really fun going through this chapter and seeing the different designs um, in the chapter. So after the embroidery is discussed, um, then we move on to the, the projects in the book. And the projects are all simple ex pouches and accessories, but I liked seeing all the different examples. As you can see here, this is a drawstring pouch, but all of these different embroideries are featured on, on the pouches to give you different ideas. And I like that it's an embroidery pattern combined with um, sort of a bag or pouch pattern. As you can see, here's the pouches standing up and they look really cute. I love the embroidery design and I like the florals as well. So I've just bookmarked a few things to show you out of the book, just to give you, as you can see, the different embroidery designs featured on the pouches. And especially these circles right here, that's something that I haven't seen a whole lot of before, and I think it's really cool. And the rest of the, the projects in the book are, like I said, they're simple pouch projects, but I think it's a really good use of time combining the two together. Like I really love the plaid looking embroidery on this pouch, the florals, and I'm just going to show you a few more of the projects. So this is a flex case, so it uses a metal frame at the top of the case, and it's really good for eyeglasses or other small things that you're saving. And again, the examples of the embroidery I think are the most interesting part of the book, um, giving you very specific ideas on how to use the embroidery on your project. So it's not just a, a super simple basic project, it's really interesting with the design of the embroidery on the front. So um, there's a few projects in the book. Um, here's another of, of the projects, the small change purse. And again, there's different examples given for each of the projects with a few embroidery tips. So again, this book is called Stitch and Sew and it's written by Anila Hui. All right, so uh, the demonstration for tonight is how to add a clear vinyl ID window uh, to any bag or accessory. So I got a request about this a couple months ago before the break. I did write it in my notebook um, and I was excited to get to it tonight. So I've got some step outs prepared. I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you how to put this project together. Okay, so you'll need uh, a few bits of fabric and interfacing to make the uh, clear vinyl ID sleeve. So you'll need four pieces of fabric. The fabric can match your, your project or can be a different color. So each of the pieces of fabric need to be four and three quarters by three inches. You'll need one piece of clear vinyl. So you can either use um, eight gauge would be fine. Um, this is 12 gauge right here. So this is just a little bit thicker than the eight gauge. Um, but the clear vinyl needs to be cut the same size as the fabric. So again, four and three quarters by three inches. And you'll need one piece of Shape Flex interfacing. So this is medium weight, fusible woven interfacing. And this is just gonna be cut slightly smaller. This is gonna be cut at four inches by two and a, two and a half inches. And you'll be fusing this to the wrong side of one of your fabric pieces and centered. So that's all you'll need to make this project. Okay, you're gonna start off with one piece of fabric with the interfacing, right sides together with another piece, obviously with no interfacing. And we're gonna be doing some marking on this fabric. So I'm gonna be drawing four lines. So the first line is gonna be an inch in from the right, right hand side. And the other three lines are each gonna be five eighths of an inch in um, or up and down, depending on how you're looking at it. So you'll have the four lines and the four lines will create a rectangular box. So you're gonna sew on top of the lines to form a rectangle. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've already got my stitching over here. And then after that, 
we're going to be assembling this kind of like um, a zipper pocket. So if you've made any of my zipper pockets before, this is kind of the method that I use. Obviously it looks a little bit different because the rectangle is bigger. So you're gonna draw a line right down the center and the line is going to stop a half inch in from either end. And where you stop that horizontal line, you're gonna draw two outward facing Vs. So I'm just gonna use my seam ripper and scissors to cut through both layers of the fabric. So the seam ripper is helpful to get a little opening started. And then I'm gonna use my scissors to finish cutting. When you get to the Vs, you want to cut as <clears throat> excuse me as far into the corners as you can without cutting into your stitching. So the as the, the farther that you cut into the corners, the nicer that your opening will look like for the clear vinyl. Okay, so after you've got that cut, we're going to trim the inner fabric away. So we're gonna trim it to approximately a quarter of an inch and there's no need to measure, you can just eyeball it. And I'm just cutting that extra fabric away so we don't have it in the seam. Okay, so using the iron, I'm gonna push this fabric with no interfacing through the opening and one edge at a time, I'm gonna pull the fabric through and I'm gonna press the seam and I always find it helpful to roll the seam out with my fingertips before giving it a press. So you're going to pull all four edges of the fabric through the opening and press it and I've got a piece over here that I've already pressed. So as you can see the right hand edge is right here. This is the edge with uh, where we drew the, the one inch line. So this has a bigger chunk over here on the right and the other three edges are all uh, the same width. Okay, so you're gonna take out the clear vinyl and we're gonna add it to the side without the interfacing. So this side right here has no interfacing and I'm gonna go ahead and move my wonder clips and just clip that vinyl to the fabric aligning the, the side edges. Okay, so after you've got that clear vinyl clipped in place, I'm gonna flip again to the right side of the fabric and you're gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch to the inside of the fabric all the way around and that will secure that clear vinyl over here. So after attaching the vinyl, let me see if I can grab my next little step out over here. After sewing that vinyl in place, you're actually gonna trim it to about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line. Let me just hold it like this, kind of wiggle it around so you can see where that clear vinyl is. Okay, so the clear vinyl is secured. Here's the edge with the thicker portion on the right. So I'm just gonna press both pieces of fabric toward the inside by a half an inch. And then you'll be top stitching this edge over here, just this right edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this creates um, the pocket where your ID will slip through. Okay, after finishing this portion, you're gonna grab your remaining two pieces of fabric. I'm going to lay one piece on top and then one piece underneath on the bottom. And you just wanna make sure all of the edges are aligned. I'm gonna use Wonder Clips again to hold it in place. Notice the right-hand side, this will already be finished. So we're only gonna be sewing three sides. We're gonna sew the top, the left hand side and the bottom using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So just those three sides. And then after you've done so, you'll be turning everything right side out. So I've got one right here that I've already turned right side out. The right hand side will still have the raw edge, which I've gone ahead and pressed toward the inside. So you'll press that toward the inside to finish. And then you can attach this um, ID sleeve to any portion of the bag. So if you like it in your lining, if you'd like to add it to the back of your exterior, wherever you'd like to place it, you'll do so while all of your pieces are attached to interfacing but still flat. So before you start assembling the bag. And to attach it, you'll just decide where, where on the fabric piece you'd like it. And then you'll stitch all four edges, including this piece right here, using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That will secure it down. 
and then your ID or whatever cards you're putting will just fit inside. So you can add this to any bag or pouch and it just makes it handy to have your ID always within reach. Um, so you can always find that tutorial in this particular Social Sunday video and we'll also be posting it separately so that you can find it anytime on Facebook or especially on the YouTube channel. So I have a question. Have you used clear vinyl for a project before? So I have a few other patterns that use clear vinyl. Um, the Kanga Supply Roll um, comes to mind immediately also the gloss cosmetic bag. So I actually have bags that utilize clear vinyl, but I've never used um, this particular method in a bag before where you just have the clear vinyl for an ID sleeve. Um, but I feel it's really handy and sometimes I just like to have my ID or cards um, somewhere within reach, but not necessarily in a wallet. So the clear um, ID sleeve will be really handy for things like that. So. Um, I have a giveaway to get to, but before we get over to the giveaway, I wanted to announce the, the winner of last show's giveaway, which was a couple months now, and I also wanted to announce uh, the randomly drawn winners of the Sublime Bag Sew Along. So let's get over to last show's winner first. The winner of last show's giveaway was Rebecca Whale, so congratulations to Rebecca. Um, please drop me a line. Uh, with your mailing address and my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's sarah with no h and earlier this year we had a sew along in the facebook group for the sublime bag which was co-hosted by michelle graham and bronwyn so thank you so much ladies for all of your hard work um, they posted a lot of extra modifications and details uh, for the sew along and you can always find that in the facebook group under photos and then albums, um, as well as you can see everyone's finished Sublime Bag. So I encourage you to jump over to the Facebook group and check those out if you haven't already. Um, and we have these three randomly drawn winners. Danny's gonna put the photos of their finished bags up on the screen right now. Um, this bag was made by Isabel, Isabel Candia um, Cerrone. Um, the next bag was made by, Ca okay, <laughs> thank you, Danny. Um, so that was this bag was made by Isabel. The next bag Danny's going to show you, um, the orange sublime bag was made by Catherine Heffron Van Hove. And the third and final bag was made by Helena Blomstrand. So congratulations to the three of you. Again, these were randomly drawn winners just because we wanted to encourage everyone um, to join in with the solo along and not be afraid to uh, post their photos, their progress photos and their finished bag photos. So. Congratulations to the three of you. Um, you've all won $80 gift certificates to my website. So again, uh, please drop me an email and get, I'll get those gift certificates over to you. And again, my email address is sarah at sosweetness.com. So the giveaway for this week is a huge, huge stack of sewing books, books that I've talked about on Social Sunday. Um, I actually also had a viewer, Arletta Freeze, sent me an extra book to include in the giveaway. So I've got two huge stacks of books. How many books do I have here? I think I've got at least 12 books. Um, so I've got um, some books I've talked about on Social Sunday and others I've uh, just added to the stash recently. So books on sewing room organization, sewing active wear. There's a bunch of quilt books also. So there's 12 books, it's a huge stack. One randomly drawn winner will be the winner of these brand new books and I'll announce the winner on the next show. So the next show will be on the third Sunday of this month. And all you have to do to enter the giveaway is let me know the answer to this question. What are you doing to stay cool? Um, I know certain parts of the world, it's not summer for you, such as our friends in Australia and New Zealand, but when it was summer, what were you doing to stay cool? So. Uh, we are utilizing our air conditioning quite a bit in Chicago. Uh, it's been pretty hot. We get a lot of humidity in Chicago also. Um, today was really nice, but the previous few days were just like really, really hot. So um, going to the movies is another good one, also air conditioning related. So let me know and I'll be drawing the winner and announcing on next Social Sunday's show. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. Back to question. Uh, oh, where do, oh. Sorry, it's been a while since we've had the show. Danny's like, are you not doing questions? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll be answering some questions live, um, as many as we possibly can, 
as many as we possibly can. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. Go ahead and type it right now on either Facebook or YouTube. Danny's going to pick out some questions and put them on the screen. So sorry. Talking about a five minute wait for all the comments left for the giveaway. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, I really jumped the gun there with the... Sorry, Danny. Oh, Danny's going to have a hard time uh, because I did the giveaway before the questions. Uh, he's going to be sifting through the giveaway comments, trying to find uh, an actual question. So sorry, Danny. Let me try to think of something while we're uh, waiting for some questions to come through. Um, Try to head off some possible questions. Um, I know a lot of you have been asking about the zipper pocket acrylic template. We're getting more of those in stock tomorrow, so those will be relisted on the website as back in stock sometime tomorrow afternoon as soon as they arrive. Mona says, can you create a baby changing pad? I actually, in my very first book, Big City Bags, there was a pattern for a diaper bag and it came with a, an extra project, which was the changing pad. Um, I did have an email recently asking for a changing pad but some sort of convertible either clutch or bag so the changing pad would be um, sewn or attached inside the clutch or bag so i thought that was really interesting i'll write that on my list for a future pattern janet says what is the name of the pouch i decided to name um, this particular pouch pattern um, the paladin pouch funny story about this project it was originally supposed to be a bag but i couldn't make the bag work um, for this particular design and so I thought you know what rather than struggling so hard Maybe people will like making a quick pouch that has some interesting details So I decided just to go with the pouch. So um, again, that's the paladin pouch and the pattern and video will be out shortly I don't have a definite date yet, but we're working on it. Kathy says what gauge vinyl did you use on the ID holder? so um, The one that I used in my example was 12 gauge um, you could also use all the way down to an eight gauge, which would be a little bit thinner. I do like the, twicker, the uh, thicker 12 gauge um, for the ID holder, uh, just because since you'll be theoretically taking the card in and out, um, I like the extra thickness and it wasn't very difficult to sew over either. It's not a lot of layers for that particular project. Sue says, what is the status of the book club? So we have our month five book club discussion coming out on July 23rd. So we'll be discussing the fifth book, um, The Hidden Thread, and I'll also be showing the fifth project on the show. And then after that, we have one more month left. So um, the, the last month will be in August. I, I'm a little bit sad about that because I've enjoyed reading all the sewing related books, but maybe we can have another book club next year. Becky says, have you thought about a yoga mat bag pattern? Yes, I have that on my short list for a future pattern. I was just trying to think of different um, I had a lot of requests for different ways people like to put their yoga mat in a bag. Some people like to have a zipper on the front. Some people told me that they like to have something without a zipper that they can just load in the top of the bag. So I've been thinking about different ideas for a bag. I might possibly come out with two different versions, but we'll see. Sarah says, will you be notifying us via newsletter or by video when the Paladin pouch is available? Yes, definitely. Uh, we'll be announcing it on the live shows and the newsletter. Um, prom I, I promise uh, we'll be going over all the coverage as far as letting people know about the new pattern. Cindy says, I have asked recently about rivets. What size do you use and what size Chicago screws? That's a great question. So the rivets that I most commonly like to use are eight millimeter rivets. So that's the size of the, um, the cap or the head. And the rivets that I use have a six millimeter post length. So I find that that, that particular length of post works for most of the bags that I'm making. I made a couple bags with um, say cork straps that are folded over a few times where I had to go over to a longer post length but um, most of the time it works for me six millimeter post length with I like the eight millimeter caps. Um, oh what size Chicago screws? Uh, Chicago screws are commonly available and um, a quarter of an inch and three-eighths of an inch and I find that for most of the bags that I'm making the quarter of an inch works just fine. Diane says will you be getting acrylic templates for the free book club patterns? That's um, I guess I hadn't thought of that. I know for sure the acrylic templates will not work for the Clyde Bank tote just because of the way the pattern pieces are with the handle um, that I can visualize that getting broken quite often but um, I am 
I am very open to having the acrylic templates for some of the other projects. Uh, Mo Monique says drawstring purse. Um, I actually do have that on my list also because I've been using a store-bought um, drawstring. It's not a purse, but it's a backpack, and I kind of like it for summer, so I thought of investigating some sort of either drawstring, purse, or um, a backpack. Lois says, can you create a small pencil or pen bag with elastic that can be wrapped around planners to hold the planner together and keep pens readily available? That's very interesting. I I can visualize the elastic, but for some reason, I'm. I'm not quite seeing, is it just a zipper pouch with elastic on it? Um, feel free to let me know um, more specific details about that because that sounds very interesting to me. Uh, Patricia says, could you make a bag that is completely vinyl so that we can go to concerts and ball games and museums? There must be some hints for the vinyl. Um, that's a really great, great question. It's also been on my list for a while. I'm wondering if, since I was, talking about the Polaris bag earlier, I wonder if this bag could be made minus the lining, but just with the clear vinyl. Um, I think maybe a tote bag might be more handy for going to a game though. So, um, oh, you know, it would be really great. I, I don't know if this is allowed at uh, stadiums, but maybe like a, a small bottom panel, maybe like a two inch thick bottom panel on a tote bag, have the rest in the clear vinyl and maybe have, um, some sort of thin accent fabric on the top to finish the vinyl. I'm not sure if that's allowed or if it has to be like completely all vinyl with no other fabric. Um, maybe somebody knows uh, the specific requirements for the vinyl bags, but um, you can feel free to either email me or let me know in the comments. I'll have Danny look out for that. Uh, if you can combine the clear vinyl with other fabrics, because I'm just not sure. Crow says, have you found a difference between OD coat gel coating, oil cloth effect, and OD coat fabric becomes oil cloth? Um, I just have the one OD coat. Let me see if I can grab it. I think I saw it in my cabinet. Um, there it is. This is the only one I've personally used. It's the OD coat O fabric. I haven't used any other varieties, so I can't say, um, but this is really great. If you're not familiar with it, or maybe you missed it when I demonstrated it on Social Sunday in the past, this makes every any fabric waterproof or, um, yeah, any, <laughs> any fabric waterproof, and you just paint it on. I would recommend painting it on a slightly bigger piece of fabric than you need. So for example, maybe rough cut your pattern pieces, uh, maybe an inch bigger paint the OD coat on and then cut to the actual size that you'll need for the pattern just to account for any shrinkage or um, as you're ironing it, it might change size slightly. Very, very small amount of shrinkage, but um, I, I feel like it's definitely more accurate assembling a bag with the, the actual size pieces that you need. But anyway, this is the only one that I've tried the OD coat with fabric. Um, any plans for a video for the Sloan travel bag? I'd love to make one and need the visual assistance as a newbie. So yes, we are hoping, I'm a little hesitant to uh, decide on a date just because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but that will be in the next four pack video bundle. The Sloan travel bag, the Polaris bag, um, this one over here, and what was the fourth one? Um, oh, the coalition bag will be in the next four pack and I've actually rewritten the coalition bag pattern. So when the four pack comes out, that updated pattern will be out. There's no errors in the original coalition bag pattern, but I've just uh, reworked it so that it's a much quicker sew. And uh, yeah, I was really happy with sewing it up last week. So I think you will be too. Um, uh, Kathy says, have you ever used a vinyl, uh, vinyl covering on material? I'm not sure if you mean the iron on vinyl, uh, but I have, I demonstrated a couple different products. One of them was made by Pellon, if that's what you're talking about. Um, but the Pellon is called uh, Vinyl Fuse. It's available in a glossy finish and a matte finish. And basically it's an iron on clear vinyl that you iron onto your fabric to make it waterproof, kind of similar to the OD coat, um, but it's a little bit of a different application. So the final product is pretty similar as far as making the the fabric waterproof. I liked between the two different methods, I liked the OD coat a little bit better just because since you're painting it on and as opposed to ironing the clear vinyl on, 
um, really little to no chance of bubbles with the OD coat and with the clear vinyl I noticed very minuscule almost hard to see like bubbling in the fabric but depending on what fabric you're attaching it to um, that is a possibility Connie says when using wool do you line with um, SF 101 or foam so that's a great question I've made a couple bags with wool before um, this particular Polaris bags made with wool and I did use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern just because I wanted it to have the same body um, but definitely if you wanted a um, uh, not as structured project maybe you're making um, like a flat pencil pouch where you don't need the added structure that the foam interfacing gives you can definitely either skip the interfacing or use a different interfacing um, maybe something thinner like a fusible fleece Monique says I was going to cut out the coalition this week but I will wait for the update will it audit will it be automatically available to those of us who have already purchased it that's a great question if you purchased it using an account on my website, yes, the updated version will be available on my website. Um, on my website, there's always the option to go through guest checkout, which means you're not using your account. And if anyone has purchased that pattern using guest checkout, um, then they'll just need to email me um, manually to get a copy of that pattern since it won't be in their account. But um, either way, the pattern will be available soon as, as soon as we've got the video ready and um, everything is ready to go. So Danny's calling it on the questions. So sorry that I've mixed up the order. Um, as I mentioned before the questions, we already had the, the giveaway announced. Um, but if you're tuning in late to the show, the giveaway question for this week was, what are you doing to stay cool? So thank you again so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I'm so glad that you've stuck, that you've stuck with us. I was a little worried taking such a long break. I think it's been like a two month two month or so break I was worried that people would be not tuning in or they might have forgotten us but based on all the comments that I've been seeing on Danny's screen throughout the show um, I know a lot of people are watching and I really really appreciate you so much um, I really love designing patterns I love talking about notions and fabrics with you and I'm so happy that you've joined me for social Sunday this evening so um, thanks again for watching I hope you have a great and relaxing week and get some sewing time in. Happy sewing, bye everybody.